Hello class, in this video we're going to be covering the unit six review. So in this review, um, I'm going to talk about the solutions to these problems. Now you'll notice that I did not get 100. I did make some typos on three problems. Um, so we'll talk about those when we get to them. And I do have the correct answers on the paper there. I just didn't want to click new randomization and it changed the problem for me since I had already completed um, the example. Okay. So I'm gonna just go through it as is and talk about the questions and then my solutions. So for this problem, um, I guess, cause I already completed it, it does have the solution here, um, but it is asking me for to solve by the method of substitution, okay? So what I did was I chose equation one and, and chose to solve for the variable Y. The reason I chose I made those specific two choices is because um, one, well, the main reason is because the this term right here does not have a coefficient in front of it. I mean, it does, but it's a coefficient of one, okay? Um, visually, it looks like there's no coefficient there, but we know that there's an invisible or hidden one right here in this spot, okay? So because it was already a positive one coefficient, that was the variable that I chose to get to isolate. So it happened to be in equation one and it happened to be the variable y. So in order to get this variable by itself in equation one, I went ahead and I subtracted 4x on both sides, which led to the equation y equals 33 minus 4x. Then what I did is I substituted this expression for y in the second equation. Okay, so notice that the second equation is 6x minus 9, and instead of y, I put what y is equal to, which was 33 minus 4x, and then equals 81. So then here I did take this negative 9 and I distributed it. So I got 6x um, minus 297 plus 36x equal to 81. I did go ahead and move my constant over to the other side, and then I combined my two variables together or my two variable terms together and I got 42 X's. So then I did go ahead and divide both sides by my coefficient and the result was that X equals nine. So since I already have basically a formula to find Y, I just plug this X into this expression for X. So I ended up with Y equal to 33 minus four times nine or 33 minus 36 and consequently Y equals um, negative three. And so in the solution point, it's always a coordinate and it's y, x comma y. So my x value was positive nine and my y value was negative three. And so those are the two positions in there. So for number two, the directions were to solve the system again by substitution. Again, I'm looking for the term that has a one positive one coefficient and it happened to be down here in equation two. So to get this a, a variable term by itself, I subtracted 9x on both sides and I ended up with the equation y equals negative 9x. So then I use that in the other equation. So I was manipulating equation two. So this expression is going to get substituted into equation one. So notice it becomes x squared minus and then the quantity that represents y. So these double negatives actually turn into a positive. And because it's a square, I have two ways to factor this. I mean, two ways to solve this equation. I can either factor it or I can use a quadratic formula. Since I only had two terms, I went ahead and I factored it. So the two terms had an X in common and that left me with X plus nine in parentheses. And then um, I set each factor equal to zero and I got the two results, X equals zero and X equals negative nine. So then remember, this is like my formula to find the Y's. So I took that formula and I plugged in zero. I took the same formula and I plugged in a negative nine. And so for this particular X value, I ended up with Y equal to zero. And for this particular X value, I ended up with Y equal to eight one, positive. So I have two solution points. One that has an X equal to zero and the resulting Y equal to zero. And another point where X is equal to negative nine and the resulting Y value is positive 81. So this one had two. I noticed that in the computer, it does ask you for this, the term with the point with the smaller X value goes on top and then the point with the larger X value goes on the bottom. So between zero and negative nine, negatives are always smaller than 
than positives or neutrals, okay? So the negative one would, result would go on top and then the zero, zero would go at the bottom. Um, for number three, it does say to solve by method of elimination. So I took this and I noticed that they were both opposite signs. So it really didn't matter as far as signs are concerned, which um, equation I should mess with, okay? So what I did was, is I actually didn't solve this by elimination. I did something else. So see, I would have gotten points taken off myself if I had done this. Um, I did recognize that it was the same line. And so I went ahead and went in that direction. But if I follow the directions, like I expect you guys to do, right? <laughs> um, sorry there. Uh, I should not be doing it in this way. So what I should have done is I should have tried to eliminate a variable. Now you can choose which variable you want to eliminate. Um, for me personally, I always identify the one without the co with the one positive one coefficient, and I try to make that one match what's up here. So they're already opposite signs. I don't have to worry about multiplying by anybody by a negative to change signs. Um, but I do need a three here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of equation two. And I'm basically going to do equation two times three, OK? And then I'm going to write the result there. So three times equation two. This thing times three is negative 9x. That would be positive 3y. And this would be positive 18. Here, I would still have positive 9x, negative 3y, and equal to negative 18. And then for the elimination method, I would combine these like terms. So that is 0x, 0y. So I have nothing on the left-hand side. And here I also get 0. Whenever this statement is true, it implies that you have infinitely many solutions. Okay. It also implies that it's the same line. Um, and that's why there are infinitely many solutions. And so what you would do is if you have that case, you automatically let x equal to a. Okay, and it tells you that in here too, it says enter A for X and then enter Y in terms of A. So here um, X is equal to A. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bottom equation because again, it has Y without a, a, co uh, a positive one coefficient. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna plug in A for X. So I would get negative three times A plus Y equal to six, which is the same as negative three A plus y equal to six. And if I wanna get y in terms of a, I need to add this three a to both sides. Now I get y by itself and these two things are not like terms. So I do have to write them separately. I cannot combine them and say that the result is nine a because they are not both a terms, okay? Um, so then I do get this expression for y. And so then when I write my solution point, remember it's the value for X comma the value for Y. And so you just end up with two expressions, A and three A plus six. And I did draw it, I just drew it on there because they already had it as well, okay? Um, so moving on to number four. So for number four, this one says solve by elimination. Again, my eye goes toward the term with the one coefficient. So I just needed this to have a three. So what I did was three times equation two, and then there would be a three here. And they're already opposite signs, so I didn't have to introduce any negatives, okay? So the top equation is staying exactly the same, but the bottom one, each term is getting multiplied by three. And so the result is six X minus three Y equal to 27. So I combine my like terms here, those would cancel out or eliminate. And then here I get 33. Then to solve this equation, I would divide both sides by 11. And so the result is, is that X equals three. Now you can plug that X equals three into either one of these two equations. My focus is to always plug it into the equation that has a positive one coefficient for the other variable. So since I know X, I'm looking to see if one of these equations has a positive one coefficient for what? Excuse me. Um, and I don't have one that has a positive coefficient, positive one coefficient, but I do have an equation that does have a positive coefficient, okay? So 
I'm going to, my, it's just my preference, but it doesn't really matter. I could have plugged that X into here and solved for Y. It just would have required different kinds of steps. Okay. And just to verify that I'm going to do it this time. So if I plug in the three for X, I would have six minus Y equal to nine. I would subtract six on both sides. I'd get negative Y equal to three. And then I divide both sides by negative one and I'd get that Y equals negative three. Um, but if I had plugged it into the top equation, it would have been five times three plus three Y equal to six. This would have been 15. I would subtracted 15 on both sides that resulted in three Y equal to negative nine. And then I divided both sides by three, which resulted in negative three as well. So my solution point is going to be the value of X comma the value for Y. And so in this case, it's going to be three comma negative three. So that is the result for um, number four. Now, why is there different numbers here? I don't know. Something weird is going on and it has a plus mark to a check mark, but that is not the correct answer. It should be three and negative three. I think what I might have done is I might have clicked on um, a new randomization at some point. So sorry about that, but it does look like it's the same. Oh no, notice the difference. Equation two is different here than my equation two. Okay, so this is the correct solution. If this were the correct um, uh, equation two, but since this is the equation two here, then that would be the correct response. Okay, number five. So this one is the same. Okay, great. So then here, I don't have any one coefficients at all. So when you don't have any one coefficients, um, the easiest way I like to identify is just first pick a letter. Um, and it looks like I chose X in this particular situation. So I wanted to make these two match, okay? These two guys right here. And I realized that I could turn both of those into 20, okay? If you don't, you could always multiply this one by a four and then the top one by a 10, making them both 40. That would work just as well, okay? But what I did is I tried to make them both 20 because I knew I could multiply by something to make each one of these guys 20. So for the top one, I multiplied it by five because that would give me a 20. And the bottom one I multiplied by two because that one would give me a 20, okay? So when I multiply, and they already have opposite signs, so I don't need to make any one of these guys negative. So this multiplied by five would be negative 20 X. This multiplied by five would be positive 30 Y. And this multiplied by five would be positive 45. Then for equation two, this 10 X multiplied by two is 20 X. Negative 15 Y multiplied by two is negative 30 Y. And negative 23 times two is gonna be this negative 46. So here my X's and my Y's eliminate. And so I have nothing on the left-hand side, but 45 take away 46 results in a negative one. And zero does not equal negative one. So this statement is a false statement. When it's a false statement, you actually get no solution. So when it's true, you get infinitely many solutions. And when it's false, you get no solution. Moving on, number six. So here it is just asking me for the dimensions of the matrix. And you have to remember that it's always the number of rows um, by the number of columns. So always the number of rows by the number of columns. So in this case, I have each line is a row. So I have three rows, but then the pillars are like your columns. So I have one, two, three, four columns. So that's why it's got three rows and four columns. And so that's the dimension of this matrix. Order is another word you've seen. So they might use the word order. But order is the same thing as dimension. Um, number seven just wants us to write the augmented matrix. So you basically take the coefficients for X, Y, and then your constant, and then X, Y, and your constant. Notice that there's no variables in this matrix. Your matrix is just an array of numbers, okay? Um, now for eight, same thing, wants me to put an augmented matrix. So the coefficient here is one. The coefficient here is negative one. The coefficient here is six, and then my constant is six. 
Here the coefficient is four, negative seven, and then a positive one, and then the constant is negative one. Here the coefficient is six, coefficient is a positive one, and the z is missing, so there should be a zero in its spot, and the constant also happens to be zero. Now number nine is asking us to go in the reverse order, so they give us, um, they give us these matrix and we have to put it in variables. So remember, these represent the x's, the y's, and then the constants. So it's a 1x minus 6y equal to 4. Here there are no x's, but a positive 1y equal to negative 1. And then if you wanted to solve the system using back substitution, instead of using y here, you basically plug in the value for y. So it becomes six minus six, or I'm sorry, x minus six times negative one, which results in x plus six equaling to four. And so then I would subtract six on both sides and I ended up with x equal to negative two. I did that in my head, but ultimately what's going on is this. And so then coordinate, the solution is always in a point form and it's always the x value first and then the y value. So the negative two and then the negative one. Now for number 10, for number 10, we have this one here and it says to solve the system um, using gauche jardin elimination. So for gauche jardin elimination, the, the goal is to set it up and then to make the left-hand side of the bar look like the identity matrix. The identity matrix being eyes, uh, or one, zero, zero, one. And then whatever's over here will happen to be your solutions. Okay, so this is the goal. But first I had to put it in its augmented matrix. So coefficient negative two, coefficient positive six, and then constant negative 16. Coefficient positive one, coefficient positive two, and then constant negative seven. Negative seven. Then the goal was to make this top one a one. And instead of dividing everybody by a negative two, I went ahead and just swapped the uh, two rows. So I swapped row one and row two. So basically the bottom row went up top and the top row went to the bottom. Then now that I had that one here, my next goal was to turn this to a zero. So I multiplied row one by a positive two so that when I add the row two, I should get that zero in row two. So two times row one, two times this is two, two times this is four, and two times this is negative 14. Then row two went directly underneath that, negative two, six, negative 16. And when I add these two rows together, two plus negative two is zero, four plus six is 10, negative 14 plus negative 16 is negative 30. So that will replace my row two. So row one remains the same, one, two, negative seven, and row two became zero, 10, negative 30. Then my goal was to turn the 10, since the first column already has its one zero, I'm moving over to the next column. I gotta get the leading one first. So the 10 is in the spot where the leading one should be. So I'm gonna multiply row two by that reciprocal of 10, which is one over 10. So one over 10 times row two should give me my new row two. So then my row one stayed the same, one, two, negative seven. My bottom row became um, zero times one tenth is zero, 10 times one tenth is one, and negative 30 times one tenth was negative three. Then finally, my goal is to change the two in row one to a zero. So I had to multiply row two by a negative two and then add row one to give me my new row one. So row two times a negative two. Zero times negative two is zero. One times negative two is negative two. Negative three times negative two is positive six. And I add row one underneath that, one, two, and negative seven. So zero plus one is one. Negative two plus two is zero. Six plus negative seven is negative one. And that becomes my new row one. So row one becomes one, zero, negative one. Row two stays the same, zero, one, negative three. So I did turn this into the identity on the left-hand side. So this tells me that x, 1x, no y's equals negative 1, which is this equation here. And then no x's, but 1y equals negative 3, which is this equation here. And if I put my answer in a solution point, it's always the x value first and then the y value next, 
So the point, the coordinates should be negative one comma negative three. Number 11. So number 11 is very similar, but it's a larger matrix. It's a three by three system, three variables, three um, equations. And so I did put the augmented matrix first. So the coefficient of X is two, the coefficient of Y is negative one, the coefficient of Z is three, and the constant is 14. There is no X in the second equation, so I'm gonna put a zero in for its spot. Then the coefficient for Y is two, the coefficient for Z is negative one, and the constant is 19. In the third equation, um, my coefficient for X is seven, my coefficient for Y is negative five, and the Z is missing. So I'm gonna fill in a zero in that position. And then one is my constant. Now I do need to get a one up here in the top left corner. And currently it is a two. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of two, which is one half. So one half times row one to give me my new row one. And so the result here is going to be one, negative one half, three halves and seven. Row two and row three stayed exactly the same. Now, this next zero is already good to go. Um, so my last thing to do for this column is to turn that seven into a zero. So in order to do that, I need to do negative seven times row one and add it to row three so that I can get that zero in row three. So one times negative seven is negative seven, negative one half times negative seven is positive seven halves, uh, three halves times negative seven is negative 21 over two, and then seven times negative seven is negative 49. Row three went directly underneath it and then I combined the like terms. So I got zero, negative three halves, negative 21 over two, and negative 48. So that replaced row three. So here are all my values for row three, row one staying the same, and row two staying the same. Um, now the goal is to turn this two in row two into a one. So to do that, I have to multiply by the reciprocal, which is one half. So zero times one half is zero, two times one half is one, negative one times one half is negative one half, and 19 times a half is 19 halves, okay? So row one and row two stayed exactly the same. Now that I have that one in that spot, I'm gonna use it to change the, the, the rest of the column into zeros. So first is this negative one half. In order to turn that to a zero, I'm gonna need to add a positive one half. So I did positive one half times row two, add it to row one so that I can replace row one. So one half times row two is gonna be zero, one half, negative one fourth, and then 19 over four. Row one goes directly underneath that. And then when I combine the terms, I get one, zero, five fourths, 47 over four. Now, if you need to use the calculator to verify these, by all means, pause the video and verify that the numbers of the fractions are correct, okay? Um, now for me to change this one, so I've successfully changed this one to a zero in that spot. Now I'm going to change the negative three halves in row three to a zero. So I'm going to do positive three halves times row two plus row three. So positive three halves times row two would be zero, three halves, negative three fourths, and 57 over four. And then row three is zero, negative three halves, negative 21 over two, negative 48. So when I combine those terms, I get zero, zero, negative 45 over four, and negative 35 over, 135 over four. And so this becomes my new matrix. Now the goal is to turn this into a one. So to do that, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which is four over negative 45. So I did four over negative 45 times row three. And it turned out that row three turned into zero, zero, one, and three. Row one and row two staying the same as they were before. Um, so then here we need to get the zero here and the zero here. So in row two, I multiplied, um, to get that to a zero, I multiplied row three by a one half, added row two to get me my new row two. So zero, zero, one half, three halves and then zero, one, negative one half, nine, oh, 19 over two. So I get zero, one, zero, and then this turns out to actually be the number 11. Then to get a zero in row one, I have to do negative five fourths times row three plus the row one to give me my new row one. 
So I get zero, zero, negative five fourths, and three times negative five fourths is negative 15 over four. So row one goes underneath, one, zero, five fourths, 47 over four. And the result is one, zero, zero, eight. So then I replaced row one, I replaced row two, and row three stayed the same. And so if you notice, this means that x equals eight, this one says y equals 10, and the last equation says z equals three. And so in coordinate form, it would be the x value first, the y value second, and then the z value last. Um, and that did, oh, I wrote down the wrong number over here. Should have been 11. There we go. Okay, so moving on to number 12. Number 12 asked me to add A and B, subtract, um, do A minus B, do 5A, and then 5A minus 2B. So, excuse me, in order for us to add two matrix, matrices together, we're just adding them component by component. So 1 plus negative 1, negative 1 plus negative 1, negative 1 plus 2, and then 2 plus 9. And so the results are 0, negative 2, 1, and 11. For subtraction, it's going to be um, this term subtracted from this term. Negative 1, subtract negative 1. Negative 1, subtract 2. And 2, subtract 9. And so the result is 2, 0, negative 3, negative 7. Now for part C, I need to do 5 times A. So essentially, it's 5 times every single entry in A. So I end up with positive five, negative five, negative five, and 10. Then for part D, I'm doing five A minus two B. So it's five times the first entry in A minus two times the first entry in B. So five times this entry minus two times this entry. Five times negative one minus two times negative one. Five times negative one minus two times two five times two minus two times nine. And after doing all of these individual computations, I ended up with seven, negative three, negative nine, negative eight. Now for problem 13. For problem 13, I wanted me to find the product AB. So the dimensions of A are three rows and two columns. So it's a three by two matrix. Then B is a two row, two column matrix. So it's a two by two. As long as these match, you can do the multiplication. And then the outsides actually tell you the result. So the result should be a three by two matrix, okay? And so the way it works is you take these two in one row and it has to always be the rows of the first matrix times the columns in the second matrix. So these rows times this column. So my pointer finger is at negative one and my middle finger is at seven. And when I rotate, my pointer finger is at three and my middle finger is at zero. So you're going to be multiplying the negative one times the three and the seven times the zero. And so that's what we've done there. And that will give me the first row, first column position response. Now, first row, second column, we do the first row times the second column. So negative one times four plus seven times eight if I want the second row, but the first column, I'm gonna do the second row times the first column. So that would be negative four times three and then seven times zero. Then for this spot, it's gonna be the second row still, but the second column. So four, negative four times four um, plus seven times eight. And then finally for the bottom row, it's gonna be the bottom row times the first column to get me the first entry in the bottom row. So, um, zero times three and then three times zero. Then to get the bottom, the last entry, it's in the bottom row, but in the second column. So zero times four and then three times eight. And so after finding these individual computations, we ended up with the values negative three, 52, negative 12, 40, zero, and 24. Now for number 14. So for number 14, we have these two matrix matrices. Um, and so I did the dimensions of this one. This is three rows and two columns. So there's my three by two. Here, this is three rows and three columns. So it's a three by three. But these two things do not match in the middle, which means it's impossible for me to multiply them. 
So make sure that you uh, change the dimensions of your matrix. I know that usually there's like little arrows on the side here and you can go inward to decrease the number of columns or you can go outward to increase the number of columns. And then at the bottom, there's also arrows. So you can go up to decrease the amount of columns or you can go down to increase the amount of columns. But you want just basically a one by one. So you wanna make it so that you shrink it enough so it's just one box to fill. And in that one box, you do type in the word impossible. Um, and then since it wants the dimensions of the result, you don't know what the dimensions of the result is because these don't match, okay? So it would be impossible by impossible for both of those blanks. Um, for number 15 though, it is possible because both these are two by twos. So if you take the dimensions of A, it's a two by two. If you take the dimensions of B, it's also a two by two. So these match and their result would be a two by two, okay? Um, and even if you swap them the other way around because the dimensions are exactly the same. So even if you swap these, it would still give you the same kind of dimension, okay? So I put A first and then B, and I did row times column, got these values, row times column, got these values, row times column, got these values, row times column, got these values. Did all the computations here, and I ended up with these results. And they were correct. Now for BA, I put them in the right order. So I put B first times A second, and then row column gives you these entries, row column gives you these entries, row column gives you these, row and column gives you these. After all of those individual computations, I ended up with this matrix here. Um, now for A squared, A squared means you're gonna take the A matrix times itself, okay? And so then you end up with this row times this column, which gives you these entries. This row times the second column gives you these entries. Second row times the first column gives you these entries second row times the second column gives you these entries. And so then when you do those individual computations, you do end up with these values. Now I got it wrong because I accidentally typed in a four instead of a two. I don't know why I typed in a four here instead of a two. I did it right on paper, but for some reason I typoed that in the, in the web assignment. Okay. So for number 16, this one says find the inverse. So to do that, you take the original matrix and you put an identity matrix of the same size on the other side, okay? Once you have that, your goal is to turn the left side into the identity matrix and whatever you end up with on the right-hand side will become your inverse, okay? So I already have the one in the correct spot. My job is now to turn this four into a zero. So I did negative four times row one and I add row two, I should get that zero in row two. So this becomes negative four, negative 12, negative four and zero. I wrote row two underneath, that gives me zero, one, negative four and one. And so that became my new row two. Row one stayed exactly the same. And I do already have the one where I need it. So I'm gonna next turn this three into a zero. So I need negative three times row two plus the row one to get me that zero in row one that I need. So all of these entries times negative three are zero, negative three, positive 12, and negative three. Row one I placed underneath, combined all the terms, and row one becomes one, zero, 13, negative three. Row two stays the same, zero, one, negative four, one. So since this is the identity, it tells me that this is the inverse, okay? So my inverse is actually 13, negative three, negative four, and one. Now for number 17, this one also asks you for the inverse. And I believe I did make a typo on this one as well. Oh no, I had an error. I had an error somewhere in here and I don't remember where it was, but I remember it was somewhere around here where I had the wrong number and then I had to go back and fix it, okay? As soon as I saw that red X, I was like, oh, I made a mistake somewhere. But I was able to locate it by paying attention to what the steps I was taking. And then I think it was here that I like forgot a negative and I had the wrong number there. And so therefore it threw everything else off after that. Um, and so I ended up with the wrong answer, essentially, okay? So um, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it the correct way, okay? 
Um, and I did check to make sure that was an inverse. Um, I didn't show the checking, but I did multiply this by this just to verify that it gave me the identity so that I knew that my answer was correct since the computer wasn't able to tell me that my answer was correct. Um, so it starts off with this matrix here. Now you put a uh, an identity matrix of the same size on the other side, and then the goal is to turn this into this. So I needed to do negative four times row one plus row two to get me that zero in row two. Coincidentally, I also had to do negative four times row one plus row three to get me the zero in row three. Here's all my computations, and then these are the results. So row one stayed the same, row two became this, and row three became that. Then the next goal was to turn this entry into a one, and I did that by multiplying row two by its reciprocal. So zero times one half is zero, two times one half is one, one times one half is one half, so on and so forth for each entry. Row one and row three did not change. But now that I have that leading one in this position, I can change each of these into zeros. So for row one, I had to use a negative one times row two plus the row one to get me that zero in row one. For row three, I needed a negative three times row two added to row three to get me that zero in row three. And so again, here's all my computations and my work. I did replace um, row one with these values. Uh, row two stayed the same, and then row three became those values. Now the goal is to turn this entry into a one. And so to do that, I multiplied by the reciprocal two over one or just two. So each one of these entries times two resulted in zero, zero, one, four, negative three, two. Then the goal was to change each of these into uh, zeros. So it's the same thing for both, negative one half times row three plus the row I'm trying to change to zero, which would give me that new row with the zero in the correct spot. So for negative one half times row three, I got this, row one went directly underneath it. And after I combined everything, I ended up with one, zero, zero, one, one, negative one for row one. Um, row two stayed the same, zero, one, or I'm sorry, row two did change over here. So negative one half times row three plus row two. So this is all negative one half times row three. And this is row two as it was up here. And then after combining all my like terms, I ended up with zero, one, zero, negative four, two, negative one. And row three is what changes, what stays the same. Um, and since I do have the identity on this side, that means that this side is the inverse. So the inverse is actually one, one, negative one, negative four, two, negative one, four, negative three, two. Again, that's not what you see on the computer. Um, these two entries are um, incorrect because I had an incorrect value. Um, I think it was here or it might have been there that I had an incorrect value at some point in the problem. Okay. But this is the correct answer now. Now, number 18, number 18 says use an inverse to find the matrix, the solution of the system. So I put it in its equation form, right? The AX equals B form, because I know that that leads to X equaling A inverse B, okay? So I wrote A, which is the coefficient matrix, times B, which is the, ver or times X, which was the variable matrix, the variables are X and Y. Um, equal to B, which is the constant matrix. And so then I, according to that rule, I knew that this matrix was gonna equal the inverse of that matrix times B. I just didn't know what the inverse of this matrix was. So I had to go over here to find it, okay? So I put that matrix two, four, five, two, and then an identity of the same size, and I started going at it. So first I changed this to a one by multiplying all of these values by one half, and the result was this matrix. Then I needed to turn this into a zero. So I did negative four row one plus row two, and that gave me this result, okay? Then I needed to get a one here. And so I multiplied by the reciprocal one over negative eight to the whole row two, and that resulted in this row two. And then I had to change this to a zero. So I multiplied row two by a negative five halves, added my row one to get me my new row one and I ended up with these results, okay? And I showed the work over here. 
So the inverse of this guy is actually equal to this matrix here with all the fractions. So I replaced this inverse notation with what the actual, this notation got replaced with the actual inverse was. And then from here, I did row times columns, row times columns. And so I ended up with these entries. After those computations, I ended up with negative one and positive one, which means that the solution is a coordinate x comma y, which is negative one comma one. And that did happen to be correct. Now for number 19, it wants to know the determinant. And so the determinant is a times d minus b times c, where this is a, this is b, this is c, and this is d. So you're basically taking the downward diagonal subtracted from the upward diagonal, okay? Again, when I say downward and upward, I mean from left to right. So if I'm going this way and I'm reading it from left to right, it's going down. If I'm doing this, these, this diagonal, but I'm reading from left to right, it goes up, okay? Always add the ones that are going down, subtract the ones that are going up. And so then this times this is negative 48 minus five times zero, which is zero. So the determinant was actually negative 48. Now for 20, it does not specify whether to use cofactors or not. So I did not, I used the technique that I showed you guys in the video for this section. So you, replace, you rewrite the first two columns outside that uh, matrix, and then you do the whole triple diagonal. So when I multiply all of these downward, I get negative 36. When I multiply all of these, I get zero. When I multiply these, I get zero. Then for the upward triples, I multiply those, I get zero. I multiply these, I get zero. And I multiply these, I also get zero. So these all stay the same sign. And then I have to subtract each of the uppers. And so the result actually just happens to be negative 36. Now for 21, we're gonna be using Kramer's rule. So the first thing I like to do is put it in its matrix form so I don't have all the variables in the, pro in the way. So it's just four, negative three, your equal sign, negative 24. 6, 9, equal sign, 18. So for D, we're going to do the determinant of just the coefficients, which is 4, negative 3, 6, 9. So this product, which is 36, minus this product, which is negative 18. So negative and negative, you're actually adding 36 and 18, which is where 54 came from. Now, if you want to find DX, then what you're doing is you're replacing the X column with the constants. So this column became the constants and the second part of the coefficient, second column of the coefficient stayed the same. And so then I do my determinant again, this product is negative 216 minus this product is negative 54. Those turn into a plus and negative 216 plus 54 is negative 162. Now to do dy, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna replace the y column with the constants. So the x column stays exactly the same and the y column turns into the constant column. Um, and then you do your determinant. So four times 18 is 72 minus six times negative 24, which is negative 144. This actually turns into 72 plus 144 and the result is 216. So then in order for me to find x and y, I'm using the Kramer's rule, which says that x is equal to dx over d. So negative 162 over 54, which reduces to negative three y is dy over d, so I'm going to take the 216 over the 54, and I get 4. And the solution is a point, and it's the x value comma the y value, so negative 3 comma 4. Now number 22 says to use Kramer's rule to solve if possible. Um, if not possible, then enter impossible. So I tried to do the determinant of d, just the coefficients, so 4, 5, 8, 10. And when I found this product, I got 40 minus. And when I found this product, I also got 40. Um, and so I get zero. And so it's impossible to use Kramer's rule when D is zero, because look where D is located in Kramer's rule. D is in the denominator. You cannot have zero in the denominator. So this is what makes it impossible to use Kramer's rule here. So for number 22, the response was just impossible. Now, for number 23, it says also for me to use Kramer's rule. And it looks like on this one, um, I made a typo and I typed in four instead of negative four. So that was just purely a typo for this problem. So for, uh, let me actually put the matrix over here first. So one, two, three, and negative five. 
negative two, one, negative one, 10, three, negative three, two, and negative 17. So for D, it's just the coefficients. So it's just this part. And then I rewrote the first two columns, did all the downwards, did all the upward products. And then these stay the same side. So this plus this plus this, and then minus the upper, minus the upper, minus the upper. And so after all of those computations, I ended up with 10. Now for dx, you're gonna keep the same um, coefficient matrix, but you're gonna replace the x's with the constants. So notice that the constant column is now where the x column was, the y column and the z column stay the same, okay? Rewrite the first two columns and then start doing your downward products and your upward products. Downward products I add, upward products I subtract. And so then the result was negative 40 here. For dy, we keep the x column the same and the z column the same, but the y column gets turned into the constants. And so we do our, we rewrite the first two columns and then the downward uh, products, the upward products. So we add all the downward products, we subtract all the upward products and the results happen to be 10. For dz, we're doing the same thing. The X column and the Y column will remain the same as they were, but the Z column will then turn into the constants. So you rewrite the first two columns, you do the downward triples, then you do the upward triples, and I mean triple product, right? You're multiplying three different terms. Um, and so then all the downwards you add, and then all the upwards you're going to be subtracting. So it's um, minus negative 15, minus negative 30, and minus 68. And then after all that computation, I did end up with negative 10. So the Kramer's rule is that x is dx over d. So in this case, negative 40 over 10. And then for dy, it's 10 over 10. And then for dz, it's negative 10 over 10. And so then these results are negative 4, 1, and negative 1. And so in the coordinates, it's always going to be your x value, your y value, and then your z value. And again, it marked me wrong because I forgot the negative on my x. So for this problem, they do give me the whole matrix. It's just a matter of putting it into its augmented matrix. And then you can solve this um, whichever way you want. And it looks like I didn't follow the darn directions. OK, so ignore this page. I'm going to put them all over again because I didn't follow my directions. I didn't realize that down here it said use Kramer's rule. So for 24, we have 4i1 plus 8i3 equal to 14. 2i2 plus 8i3 equal to 42. Um, I1 plus I2 minus I3 equal to zero. So this one, I know it's gonna waste a little bit more time, but I am gonna cover it um, from scratch essentially. So the matrix is going to look like 4, 0, 8, 14, because I2 is missing in the middle there. Um, I1 is missing, 2, 8, 42, 1, 1, negative 1, 0. So I'm going to do ahead and do D, which is going to be the coefficient matrix. Then I'm going to repeat the first two columns and do my triples, so it's negative 8. And zero, and then zero. Then my upper triples, zero. So then I get um, negative eight plus zero plus zero minus 16 minus 32 minus zero. So that is um, negative 56. So D equals negative 56. Then I'm going to find dx, which means I replace the x column with the constants. And the y or the i2 column will stay the same and the i3 column will stay the same. Repeat the first two columns, then do your triples. So negative 28, zero. Oh gosh, what is eight times 42? Three, three, six. 0, 8 times 14, 1, 1, 2, and 0. So we end up with negative 28 plus 0 plus 3, 3, 6, and then minus the uppers. 
And so the result is um, 196. Okay, and then now for dy, and it's actually not dx because the x's are not my variables, it's i1. And so the next variable is i2. Um, now I'm going to replace the i2 column with the constants. So the i1 column will stay the same, i2 will become the constants, and then i3 column will be the same. So let's rewrite the first two columns. Then do the triples, what is four times 42? Do this triple, this triple zero. So then we get um, negative 168 plus one, one, two plus zero, and then subtract the uppers. So let's see what that is. I get negative 392. Okay, now we're gonna do DI3. So we're going to keep the, the I1 column and the I2 column the same. But we're gonna change the I3 column to the constants. And rewrite the first two columns. So then we do these. And then the uppers. So then we have zero plus zero plus zero and then subtract the uppers. So minus 28 minus 168 minus zero. And I get negative 196. So then I1, according to Kramer's rule, is gonna be DI1 over D, which was in this case, 196 over negative 56. And that result is negative 3.5. Then I2 is gonna be DI2 over D, which happens to be negative 392 over negative 56 which happens to be positive seven. And then I3 is gonna be DI3 over D, which is negative 196 over negative 56. And so we end up with positive 3.5. And if you notice, those are the values that we got in here, even though, if you wanna pause the video real quick, I did it not by, um, I did not do it by using Kramer's rule, I did it by a Gauss chart and elimination, and I got the same thing. Okay, so I guess I gotta zoom out a little bit, but um, this is another solution. So you can pause it just so you can see this solution here. Um, but that should have been the solution instead because we were asked to be using Kramer's rule. Okay. But that is the end of um, the review. So again, you can always verify my stuff. If you ever see an error or have a, um, need some clarification on anything you see in these videos, you can always text me. Um, and if you tell me which video you're watching and around what minute you're on that, you, that caused your question, um, I should be able to, to respond to you and reply um, as soon as possible, okay? So that is it for the unit six. The last videos you're gonna see are the two reviews for the final exam, which have already been pre-recorded. Um, and that's the end of the semester. So if you made it this far, congratulations. Just finish out strong and you should be there, okay? Good luck to you all and have a great day. Thank you.